Okay. Welcome to Podnuts Daily, episode number 302, I think this is. Wow. Um, thank you guys for joining us. This is the show about computer repair and such related matters. We have technicians and people who are experienced in the field come on the show and try to impart knowledge to you guys to help you do a better job in your computer repair business or just for fun, whatever you want to do, however you want to handle it. It's all up to you. Let me introduce the guest today, though, for you guys. Lisa Hendrickson from callthatgirl.biz. Hey. What's up, Lisa? Hey there. Not much. Just settling in for a Minnesota evening. More storms. More storms? What kind of storms? Yeah. Uh, I would call them icy, sleety, wet, thick slush really yeah <laughs> oh man that sounds harsh yeah it you was know what? bad last night really what, what's mm -hmm. it been like well we just started to get our touch of spring here and it was like feeling good and then we got about four to some areas got four to seven inches of uh it started with ice and then sleet and then snow so it was kind of hidden underneath yeah and it turned out to be a big mess i saw eight cars in the ditch in a two-hour period so oh, that ain't man. too bad yeah, Minnesota. I'm telling you, last time I talked to you, I lived in Philly. I moved. I'm in Florida now. I've, oh, yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been wearing shorts for about six months. Nice. And I almost don't <laughs> yet miss that weather you're, you're just talking about. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I know Philly. I've been out there in the winter, too. It's just as bad. No, yeah. no Easter's, right? Yeah, they're nasty. It's nasty. It's just miserable. And Philly. I don't know. Minnesota sounds nicer. Yeah. That 76 freeway is crazy. I think oh. it's 76, right? Yeah, the worst. Well, why did you remind me about that? I was trying to erase that from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend and I ruined a car trying to miss a deer one night coming back from Atlantic City. So I'll never really? forget that freeway. No, it was the most horrifying car wreck I've ever been in. And, you know, the, the freeways are so thin and you, there's no room. And if a deer jumps in the way, you know, they're going to jump to the other side and right. get squished. And you have to spin your car and go into this tiny little... You know, just, right. it's really a tight freeway there. So oh, for 76, scary. forget it. I forget mm -hmm. it. Well, yeah, it's scary. Gl glad you're all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have talked about, you've been on the show before. We talked about your mm -hmm. site. Uh, it still looks like it's going strong. Yeah. It sounds like business is going really good for you, actually. Yeah, we're growing. So it's it's callthatgirl.biz. Um, yeah. What do you do, Lisa? Tell us what you do if, our, if anybody didn't miss the first show. And then um, you could just, uh, we could talk about remote support and whatever you want. Sure. Uh, basically, Call That Girl has always been um, a remote support help co help desk company, but it didn't start out with remote support. It started out like every other business. You work out of your house and do home visits for everybody. But as I got more busy and um, with Minnesota Weathers, I had to start moving to a help desk remote support kind of business. Right. And it was a slow transition. It took, you know, probably three years to tighten it all up, you know, to what I really wanted. But um, uh, we do computer repair, we do virus removals, um, software installations, and that's just, you know, like the basic remote stuff. But we actually do quite a few things. And then we do on-site support. And since we talked, I don't know if I told you, we opened another location. I think I did. I think I heard it, you know, some way yeah. through the grapevine, LinkedIn what, or whatever, Twitter. Yeah. So we what, opened what, the second one. You did. You know what? Yeah, actually, you got, you interviewed me when I first opened here, and it was really bad because I just moved in and had no furniture. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I got more furniture now. <laughs> um, so my St. Louis Park office is doing well, and the Rochester office is doing well. And in May, we're going to open a third location in uh, Winona, Minnesota. That's about 40 miles away. So how, how close so. are the offices to each other? Um, St. Louis Park and Rochester are about 75 miles apart. Okay. And Winona is 40 miles east of here, right on the Missis uh, Mississippi River. Okay, cool. Big and, and, and they do town. they do hardware and software? Yep, we're going to do all of it okay. at both locations. Okay. Yeah. So, so since, I guess, since we started out in 2007, we've got the two locations moving to the third one. All of them do on-site, all do... Um, that they have, we all have shops where people can bring it to us. And then the remote support is all done through Rochester, kind of like the command center. Right. And I've got techs in all these locations that can jump on and do remotes too at any time. So they really do all three, but their core is shops and on site. So, damn, well, that's good. Yeah. You got a good combination because yeah, it, it, cool. it was mostly about remote last time I talked to you. Well, it was mostly me doing it all, but <laughs> since since we've spoke last, I've added on seven more people to the company. So, do you want to tell us how you how your secrets of expansion? 
if you if you want to call them that tips you know what i i actually have two one is i've joined up with a lot of other people to be um to actually be affiliates for them so they like want to promote us so we give them an affiliation how do you mean giving us clients how do you mean i found i found a lot of well-connected people that like to make money and this <laughs> isn't like one of the ways this is just some of the things i've been doing in the past few months is i partnered with um one company that has hundreds of clients and they have i've done their support or our company has so they've um said hey can we promote to our company and you give us a commission so i said sure and they come in slowly they're not like you know every day but it's right. two or three a week and we've also had a couple companies um recently just give us all their home support because they got out of it and one company just called up and said we want to give you 500 clients because we're closing shop for really? free so <laughs> for yeah. free you no know, it was awesome you can't argue with that. Times. <laughs> <laughs> wow. they, they just wanted to do something else and so we were given a gift Damn, that's yeah. nice yeah you must uh, you I take it. Oh, tell, I'm telling you, you, you must have pulled it in somehow. I'm not a big believer in luck, so I know that somehow you got you got that somehow. You're mm -hmm. doing something right, is what I'm thinking. Um, but w w when you're talking about affiliates, um, so a co these companies uh, d d have the work, but they didn't want to do the work, so they they contracted out to you, or and you know and they and they get a commission, or I'm trying to follow it. Okay, let's pretend like you go to an executive suite center. You know, they rent out the rooms, you know, to other people. Yeah. Um, that's an opportunity for someone to affiliate with them and say, hey, can we be your tech support company? And then we'll give you tech support at discounted rate and you tell all of your tenants. That's just a, a simple opportunity. Gotcha. A lot, of people, a lot of people overlook that as a really good marketing opportunity and plus a commission uh, based. Um, you know, it's it's like, why would the owner of a, an executive suite company want to do that? Well, because they get affiliation money every week or every two weeks from their clients. Um, that's just an option. There's a lot of other ways. If you think of um, associations like, oh, I don't know, let's just pretend a chamber of commerce, you know. Right. If you wanted to say to the chamber, look, if you guys promote us, we'll give you a discount on all your tech support. I see. And so then they get tech support discount and then they promote you for free. I huh. mean, that's just an example, right. but there's actually, I'm working with about 20 associations right now to do their tech support at an affiliation commission basis. I see. And it's really kind of what I would call fresh marketing because you don't have to go out and put out the marketing money. No, and totally. And I do is just do the arrangement, you know? And with this economy, there's a lot of people that want that. And actually, some of them don't even want the commission. They just want a discount on their own tech support. Really? Yeah. And if you're going to deal with, you know, a couple hundred people, remote support really helps. Help. You can do so much more work quicker than to go send someone on site and run around like crazy. Right. So the, mm -hmm. these companies you're, you do affiliations with, it's, it's for remote support mainly? Yes. And on site. And that they could take it to our shops too. Okay. So yep, it's, it's local businesses though then. You know what? Yeah, it's uh, some I, I don't. Uh, some are in Florida, though, actually. Okay. Well, I mean, you're, <laughs> yep. you're able to if you're remote. That's pretty cool. Yeah, they found me on Facebook. And, I you know, interestingly, one person posted a story about us on Facebook, and it bled, and it bled. And one lady in um, Maryland read about us on someone else's page, and then she called me. I helped her. She put it on her Facebook. Really? A lady in Florida found me, and then she said, let's do affiliations. And I was like, when? Because she's connected to really large groups of people that all work virtually. And so she kind of pushed me to do this. And since then, we've added on, I think, four other companies that want to be affiliates. And since then, she's, you know, what they do is they put a, um, a link on their website, like an affiliation page or a landing page. And then she sends everybody to that to go read about us. And then it goes to my website with a affiliation link for them so we also we're backlinking each other as well then too i see that's yeah. pretty cool so that's how you get started doing the affiliate thing yeah but that's just been recently that hasn't been like for months it just right. all happened in the last two months and it really kind of grew and since i do the remote support you know 90 percent of our calls are done remotely so 
We had mm -hmm. the plan down and it worked. And these people are really happy because they work out of their homes and they don't have techs. Right, right. They're like, you know, independent, um, small office, home office, or um, small businesses. I see. That is pretty cool how you yeah. got into that. It's not, you know, it's not something that we usually go over on the show. You. We we, mm -hmm. we we always do touch on remote, but you you're like really in it, you know. You you yeah. you have insight in it. So um, I have a lot of experience doing it, Steve. About ten years, yeah, well, and I worked in that. call centers. Yeah, I worked in call centers, and I I realized that the corporate model, I I, I figured out their flaws and how to make it better because I really like the call center, you know, yeah. methodology, I guess. But how do you do it with home users and small office home office people? You know, I see. You had to figure it out. Good for you. Thanks. So what else do you want to talk about? I'll let you take the lead now. Well, you know what? I think to start off about the remote support book that I want everybody to know is really important is that the reason why I wrote it is because I'm building on my own call center of people. And in the last few weeks, I've added on two more techs and you know they're all going to be doing remote support. So it's kind of important that everybody learns the same same uh, processes kind of to do the remote support and the customer service is very, very important. And if you've ever read uh, online tech forums, you know, a lot of the other techs will say, oh, I remote in. But what I think makes my company a little bit different is that we actually have processes with the remote that we all do to make sure the customers get serviced the same way. And we have, it's customer service, it's very important. So you have like, policies that everybody follows so you're all yeah. on the same page you're all doing the same thing so yeah. it's not like somebody could kind of go in and mess everything up with his own you know oddball techniques well they you know the thing is we give a lot of room for techs to be technicians right when you're doing the call but there's right. a lot of you know like we want to make sure before we remote into someone's computer that their data is backed up and a lot of people seem to overlook this well if i go in and you know, do something that causes their computer to blue screen and then what? And I'm 900 miles away. Right. You know, well, right. everything can happen in remote supports just like it would in your shop. And we all see those problems. You know, I did this and something happened. So the first thing we do is we always talk to people about their data and make sure it's backed up. And, and if not, we can help them. We either do a quick backup to their external. We set up Mosey, um, mosey.com and back to the affiliates thing. We're affiliates of Mosey and, uh, or we can have them put in their flash drive and at least back up the critical stuff. Right. Or if need be, we have them email themselves very important documents. So, so but sometimes that isn't the first thing we, we do, but we always make sure that they fill out our online agreement, that they read it, our terms and conditions and our payment arrangements. Is that the first thing that you do? Yeah. If you want to show people on the website, um, our online uh, remote support page, just to kind of show them what we do. It's um, at the top, it says remote support. Mm -hmm. And then you click on that tab. And this is our second biggest, uh, or I guess this this page here gets the most hits on all of ours, of all of our pages. Um, so right there, it and you read it and you click on the terms and conditions. Okay. And then they have to fill out the form. And then they actually read the terms, I guess. There it is. And they fill that out. And then we have all their contact information. I see. Terminated. And then they go back to remote support and they can put in a code to for us to get remoted in with uh, Log Me and Rescue. Yeah, this is, I like your terms and conditions. They're not like, um, it's not like a mile long. Like it's actually readable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to well, do it. Just like most people, when you have them fill out a work order, they don't read the, the legal right. parts. Right. And a lot of our people do read it. Hmm. So it's kind of hard though sometimes to actually like, um, if you install a program and they have a problem with it is to have, you know, to actually, when they call back to say, Oh, we're going to charge you another 75 to fix that, you know? So we end up doing some free stuff on occasion. Yeah. I mean, but there's a certain all, amount of goodwill, I guess, you get, goes into it. It all washes. It yeah. all washes, you yeah. know, because it's not that often. But sometimes, you know, Microsoft Security Essentials has caused us some problems. Really? And we installed it. Yeah. And I said, no more. We're not, we're not, we don't put it in on, excuse me, we don't put it on anymore. Lisa, hang on one sec. And I, okay. I, I have a problem with the recording here. I have to, uh, I'm going to lose audio with you for about, 30 seconds, but I'll be right back. Okay. Cool. Okay.
All right, guys, we're back. Oh, my God. I don't know what the heck just happened. <laughs> <laughs> my Mac just crashed, believe it or not. So we're recording with alternative means. Amazing. What are we recording with? A PC? We're the PC. <laughs> yeah, Windows 7. <laughs> oh. All right. I think, well, let's take it up from where we left off. You were yeah. talking about Microsoft Security Essentials and how it did, you weren't happy with it or it did some oh. funky things. Why don't you take it from there? You know what I think what happens with a lot of us is that we like, okay, we all get hyped on a new product and it's rocking and it's working and then problems happen. And in my world, I get so many callbacks on a product, especially the free ones. And I'm like, we're not going to use it anymore, period. So we just stopped installing it. We turned to an alternative, um, became resellers for super anti-spyware. Good. And, Mike, uh, Dun Mike yeah. Duncan? Mikey Duncan. <laughs> yep. He's the man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was reselling malware bytes for a long time, and yeah. then they started having after their update in November. Oh, horrible glitches. Really? So yeah, I couldn't stand it anymore. So I said I need a new product, and we've been working with SaaS. So um, I made the the cut in January and just start buying in bulk now, and and it's a easy sell, and and for the most part, it does a pretty good job. Yeah. You know, they were a sponsor for uh, Podnuts for the month of September. Okay. And um, that was a lot of fun. I mean, they're they're a great company. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're they're great. And uh, a a lot of the guys who did buy in bulk, they love the product. So yeah. But you know, back to Security Essentials. I I I always had a gripe with that program. I would always rust, install that machines, and then I would never hear from it ever. And I'm like, is it actually doing anything? I'm. Mean, it's not even. It's not talking to me. It's not just sitting there. Is it anything happening? You didn't have any viruses. And if you installed on your Mac, it ain't gonna probably work. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Kidding. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm maybe I'm, I'm saying there might be viruses that got through the thing. Anyway, no. What, you know what? what? Here's the thing: is I saw enough of those red clean computers on Microsoft Security Essentials, so I know it works. Okay. But it, it wasn't robust enough to catch the the bad ones, right. the rip kits, right. uh, the rogues, and all the you know big baddies. So, um, to me, it was it was. Here's what we would do: is we would give them malware bytes, and then we put on a back end with MSC, and if they you know, it would get through MSC, Malwarebytes would usually nab it. Well, now we quit partnering with MSC and just use SAS alone. And I think it's just fine. Yeah, you don't have an antivirus as well? Just, just no, super antivirus? SAS. And it's working good. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, we're still removing Norton, I don't know, many times a week. McAfee, Trend, those guys. And I'm like, what, they don't work at all, and they're virus, yeah. antivirus. So why put on something else that if it's not going to get through those, yeah. I mean – if it's going to get through Norton and, and McAfee, it's going to get through MSC, honestly. Yeah. Because, I mean, MSC isn't built to be stronger than them. I got to say, when I back in, it was 2009, I must admit, but I, when I started using Norton, because I hated Norton up to that point, but I heard it was real, it slimmed down a lot at that point, and I, I started using it and selling it, and I was kind of happy with Norton, just the antivirus, just the antivirus. Yeah. So, hey, things might have changed. I mean, it's 2011 now, so, I mean. The people aren't happy with it now. Yeah, it, really? It, AVG, AVG 2011 is its little brother, a little annoyance. Really? Oh, man, and I can't tell you, Google Chrome is on my list, too. Of annoyances? <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, we have Chrome fans yeah. here. Why? Why don't you like it? I know it because I've had a lot of people that go and install it, and then it messes up. Well, the most of it is with AVG 2011. They don't play well together. Uh, Chrome and AVG don't play well together. Yeah. Interesting. Nope. nope. And and whenever I get those kind of calls in, I actually end up doing a lot of free support for people because right. I really want to know what's going on. Right. Right. And we dig and dig and dig and and half of my techs are on my research team. So like when a client calls in with something like this, I give it to them to research instead of me doing all the research. Right. And we, sometimes hours, we go and dig till we find the one culprit, Chrome. And then we have to go strip it out with their removal tool. You just can't remove it. You can't? What, is, what happens? What's, what's the symptom of AVG and Chrome? You know what? I think it's either because people installed it and then they uninstalled it and it left, you know, registry... Um, registry issues that other uh, products were having problems with. 
So then you actually have to strip it out with their removal tool. Interesting. Wow. And then they actually go and in, in, install Chrome again because they're having a glitch with something else. So it's got double, you know, it's been installed twice. Oh, man. Yeah. Who I know thought? you. I know you guys have a lot of Firefox fans and Chrome fans, and and a lot of your, your listeners are Unix and Linux guys, and, and I, I know that. But you know what? I mean, a lot of my end users are just PC people, and they're doing what's popular. You know, and I'm like, if you're gonna, if I'm gonna spend an hour and a half fixing something, is it really worth it? Are you saying Internet Explorer? Well, actually, Internet Explorer is, is uh, for us isn't that hard to um, repair because we know it so well. Right. With Firefox, we just uninstall it and reboot and reinstall it again. Yeah. And it usually fixes it. No, Chrome I, though really gets in there. Hmm. Uh, no, it's interesting. Yeah. I'm. I'm not saying. I, I know most home users use Internet Explorer and and Firefox, yeah. and I guess Chrome is starting to seep in there as well, but. I, all I've heard up to this point, just from people talk, they love Chrome. Chrome is great. I, I haven't converted over from Firefox yet, but that's the first uh, first nasty thing I heard about Chrome. No, I like me. it. I like that. <laughs> I, I, someone has to hate it. Right. I've never really liked all the Google products anyway. Oh. Uh, not after it ruined one of my documents that I worked on for hours and deleted it and couldn't find it. So I said no more. What, Google Docs? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I use some of the products, you know, but, you know, I come from the mentality of that if you like a product, you should pay for it. And that's also some people have disagreed with me on using log me in free because I'm an advocate of if it's helping me make money, I should pay for it. You know, well, I mean, if the company, so, well, Google is at one kid, they put ads up all over everything that you are paying for it by them advertising. Yeah. But yeah. log me in. Yeah, I think that they, they've. Uh, that's why I think they made their uh, Android app thirty dollars because they were sick of giving stuff away for free. Yeah. But, but um, <laughs> they they give it away. I mean, they're giving it away. Yeah. So it's nice. Why to, not use it, right? Mary, why not use it? I guess that's well, a lot of the mentality. Here's my mentality: is that the logman free? I guess before I started realizing how many server guys really used it. See, I th when I first well, let's go. But a year and a half ago, I didn't know so many online technicians. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the, only the few people I did know that, that used it, I was like, why are they chintzy in on this and not paying? Right. I pay a lot of money for Log Me and Rescue. Right. Well, for me to pay extra for Log Me and Rescue is because I don't have to install applications like you do on with Log Me and Free. Right. Mine's just the applet, and it zips in, zaps out, and right. there's no like trace of it. And well, somewhat, but but people don't wonder what is on their desktop, and, right. the, and the, that server tech has access to that computer at any time. I we don't with Log Me and Rescue, right. and they know, and they see when we're in there, and then we're done. Well, you you have a and, much bigger operation, I think, than a lot of people too. A lot of those well, guys. I don't know if it's bigger, but we need to be fast and get in, and for them to go install a program, and you know, some of our clients don't even know how to do that so All right how much is log me and rescue you know what i pay um i got three seats right now and the first one was a hundred and then we got a deal on the second one because we had the first one and that we got that for 70 and then our third one i had to really get in there and <laughs> work out a negotiation i got it for 66 and that's a month so, yeah and how many how many people can use that um, one person per seat, but we swap okay. out people. I see. Per now seat. I have okay. my own dedicated that no one can use, but me, unless we're, unless we need to share it out. Then my backend tech, he has his dedicated and the other one is shared between a couple techs that gotcha. whoever needs it at the time. But I mean, I'm kind of like the commander, so I need to have my own at all times. Right. But So you, do you, you still yeah. do a lot of the work then, even with all your employees? Yeah. Yep. I do a lot of the, um, what I would call higher end technical work and they do kind of like the um uh cleanings the virus removals the standard work and we have processes now for all, for all of that work too that they follow did you write them oh, yeah. up those processes oh yeah it's actually in another book i wrote too I, I for it's kind of like a manual of operations so we've got the 22 point checklist that all the techs follow when we do a remote or in the shop and then the virus removal we this is where we give the technicians wiggle room to use their own brains, you know, yeah. outside of a process sheet. But because right. every virus, ha it it's different. So you might not be able to um, do the same processes, but we have the same things that we do check to make sure that we did a good job That's in removing it. it. And um, the, the viruses are what we're coining as polymorphic right now. 
and really like changing constantly. And we're seeing the same ones, but they, they do different things on people's computers. Really? Yeah. Like the system tools one. Oh man, that is just coming out crazy. What does it do? It's like smart, you know, smart viruses. It is kind of, it depends on the operating system and it depends on how they downloaded it. I think like some people they're getting a black screen. They can't do anything. And then some folks are getting, um, uh, just a, like a big warning screen. Uh, it's a big blue warning, and some are just getting a notification saying that they have infections. So and no, it's really kind of different. Nothing prompting them to buy something. Mm, yeah, the ones that have the infections usually okay. get that. Okay. But some of them are really bad, you know. Yeah. So they're it's too far gone. So we we do our trickery. Yeah. To get in there, and we fix them all remotely too. Do you do re can you do reinstalls? I guess you don't remotely. I've done some reinstalls remotely. You got to have a you know, client who's kind of familiar with how to, you know, do some things right. like we make sure their data is backed up. But, uh, with the, with the factory resets, those are easy to do remotely. I got you. We fix blue screens of death remotely. Not but, all of them, but right. Some. So you're able to, even with like badly infected machines remotely get them handled. You've got it down mm -hmm. to, to enough of a science. Mm -hmm. We get their internet turned back on, and um, there's a couple tricks to getting those the the internet turned back on. You know, um, I don't think it's rocket science to say you have them you know check the proxy buttons, and then that right. usually turns on the internet. But they're so deeply infected that you can't do anything. Sometimes their system files or uh, applications are corrupted, so we can't run anything. So then there's more trickery to that to get hmm. those to work. Right. But I, yeah, we do most of them remotely. There's only been a couple, I think, that we've had to bring in the shop. We do a lot a week. Interesting. So, mm -hmm. Where are these tricks, this trickery you talk of? The you, trickery. You, now, you said you wrote a couple books. Which uh, Do you include that type of thing in what? some of the books? Yes. Uh, the remote support book actually um, has um, a virus removal kind of check sheet that, I mean, I know a lot of people know how to repair viruses or remove them at this point, but the the remote support trickery things that you want to learn is how do you talk to a client to get their remote, or excuse me, to get their internet back on? And then there's about four steps in there that you can take that sometimes it's safe mode, sometimes it's regular, sometimes the safe mode won't work. And then it's like a check sheet of things that we've done to make to get you remoted in. And if you can read those through before you do it live with the client, you'll understand it better. And that's towards the end of the book. And then we also have um, the computer cleaning checklist is in there, virus removal checklist, okay. and a lot of customer service, like things you can talk about during reboots that are safe to talk about. And this is what I teach the techs here. Okay. Is, you, know, there's, you don't want to talk politics, obviously. You don't want to talk about religion. You know, right, keep, right. Keep it to keep. And actually, there's there's a chapter we could talk about called topics that are safe for upselling opportunities. Okay. Like, so you could kind of like figure out if they're a family or, you know, like um, what I've done is say, oh, you got a family, and the mom's like, yeah, I got a bunch of kids. I'm like, wow, well, you know, we could probably do a computer cleaning on all of them, give you a little discount. <gasps> oh, you could. <laughs> I'm like, sure, let's book it. You know, <laughs> so that's kind of like an upsell opportunity that you do during reboots is, and find out if they got antivirus, but online backup with all the kids in college, they can all back up their computers now. Right. And the family account. I mean, there's so many opportunities for upselling. Okay, well, that's one. So one's family. Just try to see what see how, if, they, if they have kids and if mm -hmm. you can clean up their machines. That's good. I also ask what they do for work. Okay, that's always a safe topic. You know, what do you do for work? And they go, Oh, I'm an accountant. Do you work from home? Yeah. Well, then I think. Well, then they got family computers. Right. You know, and right. then I ask them. I start the drill. What do you use for? I mean. I'm already in the machine, but I always say, when's your subscription up? And we do a review and I ask them if they're happy with their product. And then we do a virus check just to make sure there's nothing, you know, bad hanging out in there anyway. And we help them with their backup or offer other solutions. Okay. And then we install Dropbox 2 for them now. Do you? Mm -hmm. Now, not for backup purposes, just as a cool just, thing for them to have? Yeah, file sharing. Okay. I, I wouldn't trust... Dropbox for full backup. Yeah, because I've seen some problems with that. Really? So you you upsell them on Mosey for backup. You use uh, when mm -hmm. when you try to get them get antivirus out there. It's you use super anti spyware. 
or malware bites still or, sometimes or malware bites. Well, we're mostly SAS, but um some sometimes we do malware bites still depends on i don't know i guess it depends on the client but mostly SAS lately okay mm -hmm. cool all right. I mean, and we don't try to upsell every client either. Just so you know, it's it's just that you have to get to know the client and what's best for them. And we don't have hard upsells. It's all just based on what we think they need, and they're going to buy it anyway. You know. Absolutely. So if we see their subscription running out in 13 days for McAfee, we're like, hey, why don't you buy our product? And it um, is 40 bucks for life. Right. You know, I I have nothing against upsells. I don't. The way we've been talking lately in the last couple of shows, I don't think anybody should have anything against upsells. You know, it's like we're here to help the the, the listeners with their business, and yep. business is business. They need to make money to support themselves. So, yeah. if people need these things, and any tips you can give on how they they the tech can make more money and the customer can be happier, it's a win-win yeah. situation. It is win, and you know what I think that we put a lot of our how I figured out the 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 commission that we get off these goes into so many other things like my training, my texts and all the extra things about the product. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we talk about SAS here at Call That Girl a lot. Really? And we talk about, yeah, a lot of talk is being done about that product here. Well, There's always something going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some virus and this and that and what it catches and what it misses and what we have to go go find then and and go do. And, and then we don't use it as our core. It's just one of the tools. Right, right. You know, so and since it's our common thread, I mean, every virus has different angles of doing stuff. So definitely. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, this. So far, so far, you mentioned the remote book. Let me talk about sure. that for a sec because we have okay. a we have a link on Podnuts. If you guys are interested in the remote book, you go to podnuts.com. I'm going to go there too with you. Podnuts. Okay. Well, don't go now if you don't want. But podnuts.com slash call that girl. <coughs> um, we have a link to the remote support book, Call That Girl's Guide to Remote Support. You can check it out there. Um, uh, see all the things that it includes. You know, Lisa will probably talk a little bit more about it. And then uh, you have you could buy it there if you want. So that's that's the link. The yeah, I'll go link. there too. Well, you know, we can actually do a quick review to to kind of pinpoint some specialty items that people I think that do remote support might overlook. Okay. Is is in the beginning chapters? It's like why remote support is awesome. I mean, first of all, in this economy, people are still complaining about travel, gas, and they drive out for forty five minutes to do a fifteen minute repair, and they're like, "Oh boy, you know, that could have been done." You know, if I could just talk them through it or remote it in. Well, it's so easy to remote somebody in. A lot of my clients are 80 years old and they can sure. do it. And so it's not hard. It's just you have to know your strategy to get comfortable with the remote. And Especially we, with log me and ignition. It's easier for them too. I've never used ignition. Uh, oh, not, not ignition. Um, log rescue? me and rescue. Yeah, rescue. Oh, yeah. That's what we use and I love it. Um, so anyway, we do a little... I do a little talk about the past two years of why I got into remote support. And then we have questions for the techs. Like, you know, to do remote support, you have to be pretty patient. Right. And be able to understand that the you have to think like the end user. And and remember that when you might say, go click on that. And they're like looking way up in the sky. <laughs> like, where's that button? I don't know. <laughs> and then you got to kind of rain them down into what you want. And I, I do a little questionnaire. And then um, things to do before you start remote support, which is like the legal end and getting your website up and getting accounts made. I mean, a lot of people that are serious about it already have this stuff in place. But for the, the, the guy who's working out of his home, that's like, yeah, I can start doing this. You have to, you have right. to prep. And um, then you have to set up your remote tools. And then I even show you how to book appointments and the questions you ask and right. how to work it into your calendar. I mean, we all have shop duties too, you know? Right. Um, then actually doing the appointment and walking people through things. And then there's just a bunch of miscellaneous information. Okay. We do handle payment. You know, a lot of people, the, the main question is, how do you take payment? Well, with some of our services, it's um, like computer cleanings are 75 uh, solid flat fee, unlimited time. Well, that we could take $75 for up front, and then if we, whatever upsells they want, we put that on the credit card. Okay. But they're like, well, how do you bill them for like, you know, you're not sure of the time. Well, you can also guesstimate how much time it'll take and say, well, that sounds about like two hours, you know? Okay. And so then you can take payment. Well, a lot of credit card 
um, processors, you can't do a pre-authorization, but PayPal lets you do that. Uh -huh. So I pre-authorize for the time that I think it's going to take. Okay. And then if it goes over, the client's usually good about giving the card back and saying add on more time. But um, our cleanings, our virus removals, um, our virus removals are 99. So we take a flat fee for that okay. and the cleanings, and that's a good chunk of our work. Hmm. And the rest, I, I just usually bill them at the end too. Because sometimes it takes longer than right. you expect. So sure. Um, then we also deal with how to deal with um, computer crashes during the call. Like when you have them reboot, it's a black screen. We reboot and it's a blue screen of death, or you can't get them remoted back in. And and we go through a little checklist of things for you to check and do. And then we also go through problems you will encounter during uh, remote support sessions okay. that are unexpected. How to deal with issues you cannot fix remotely. And when do you know to give up on a call? Because sometimes you just can't fix the world with remote support. Right. These are just examples of things I've dealt with. And then how to deal with the client callback, which is no different than if you're in a shop and they take it home and they're like, well, I brought it home and this don't work now. It's no different. I'm remote. They're going to call you the next day and say, since you did this cleaning, my, my Adobe won't work now. Right. And, and you can in your head go, I didn't touch Adobe. <laughs> I didn't do it, but now, but they think you did. Right. So that's how you deal with those callbacks. Um, there's very few refunds that call that girl. So I just kind of give examples of things that people might want to refund on. Right. I've, I think I've only given four out in four years. So I don't, we don't deal with it that much. Damn. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, chit chat that leads to upsell opportunities, affiliates we partner with. And that's kind of just a list that are good with remote support. Right. Um, getting connected to a computer that has a virus. This is where, this is the chapter we deal with. The internet's not working, and it's pretty heavy. I put a lot of time into that, and it's pretty much how I've done it for years. Um, virus removal instructions, and then a disclaimer that's saying like, basically, call it girls, not the end all be all best. Always use your own judgment. <laughs> this is just how we do it. Right. And you get the cleaning list and then just some closing thoughts and wish you well. Very awesome. Mm -hmm. Guys can check it out there. It's podnuts.com slash call that girl. It's a pretty good little book. I think that if you if you purchase it and you're really serious, this book is not for just everybody. Right. You know, obviously with the price tag at, you know, $100, it's for people that really want to add on another service line from someone that's already done it. And this is exactly what I've done to build this. This isn't like some hokey pokey thing. This is all my true knowledge. And, and like I said, in a few other areas online that I would probably have to say that 75% of our work is remote and that's a lot of money for a business. So if you're looking to change your, how you do remote support, this book is going to absolutely value for you in the first or second call you take. Oh, I, I, I totally mm -hmm. get it. I mean, heck, we didn't talk too long ago in the past and you've expanded like d d tons since then. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> so you, you know what you're doing. And if that, if you put together a, like a guideline, like a list of like, a book like this with all this information yeah. in it. Um, you've, you've already sold a bunch of them and you said people are giving rave reviews on it. So yeah, I can't know. believe how many I've sold already. It's so awesome. And <laughs> the thing is people are like, don't you feel like you're giving away people are going to take your competition? I'm like, you know what? I'm in Minnesota. There's 4 million people here. I, you know, I could sell lots of these books and we're never going to cross compete. Right. There's so many people in the world that I'm like, why not share it? Plus there, I, I get asked a lot online from people about how to do stuff. And I'm like, at this point you can, you know, you could purchase the guide. It's a, it's a full rundown of it all. And, and I don't, I don't fear competition with remote. Work. Right. Right. I really don't. And in fact, I'd be proud if somebody started using it and did well. You know, it's true. It's, 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 so I've done, I don't know, I've wrote a few publications now. You'd write it to share. What is, what you wrote a few publications? The social media guide. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, your books. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And it, I also wrote up a, a manual of operations for business procedures. Yeah. And I, I didn't see that one. I remember the, um, you must have did that it's one hidden. recently too. I, I remember the social one. <laughs> the social one's done really well, and we're actually going to work on in my side time if I can find it, a second edition, cool. which is going to be more um, robust and include more of my blogs, okay. and kind of make it a printed book. Cool. Instead of an online one, yeah. 
Now, I, I'm like you. I mean, with comp, as far as competition and, and putting information out there. Plus, mm -hmm. plus, everybody remembers their mentor. You know what yeah. I mean? Unless they're a real <laughs> a-hole, they're not going <laughs> to screw you over the person who taught them no. all that stuff, you know? So it's, and yeah. you, you just, you, you actually meet a lot of people doing it that way too. I've kind of been looking up to a lot of the people in the computer repair world. Now, you know, I've told you before that before Technable, I didn't even know any of these online forums were here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know how I missed them. I just didn't ever catch them. And since, um, I've met, you know, a lot of the, the guys on Technable, you and, and some other folks. It's kind of just been really cool to share information with everybody. And I'm a big advocate on giving a lot of information. So, I mean, I don't yeah. sell every single piece of knowledge right, I have. I right. go on forums everywhere and give out information. I'm, tips and tricks, things I've done. I ask for opinions, too, because I don't know everything. <laughs> right. And I just love this. I don't know how I missed it, but it's been pretty cool for me, too. Oh yeah, you know, to, to meet people. Just, yeah, the, the communities for uh, between all the sites and and just in the whole field is just pretty amazing. I never expected it either when I started this. Wow, how long ago did you start it? It's close to three years now, I think. See, I started my business in 2007, and I didn't know any of this stuff. I had to do it all on my own. <laughs> Every part of it. I didn't even have one friend that owned a computer repair business. Really? And the the guys I did meet didn't like me. <laughs> they, they didn't want to become my friend, so I was really a lone soldier. They didn't in this, want to be your this, friend. <laughs> this army, <clears throat> and in Minneapolis is kind of a competitive market. Really? You know, yeah, and I would have to say that. You know what? I went to all my com competition to meet them, and they just all brushed me off. And then I would go try to meet with server guys to have them refer me business for the home users, and they were like. Sure, we'll give you those calls, wink, wink, and then they'd, <laughs> and then I'd call them and say, "Well, I got a server referral," and then they'd never give me any. So, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I was welcomed in the community until I started meeting you guys online. Awesome. That's when I oh, that's yeah, that's cool. why I kind of felt like I had a family then. Yeah, so, right. Good. It was cool. That is awesome. You know what? I just looked on your site and I see that Android app addicts thing. I still haven't done that Android. What? I broke down and did. You mean the you torch. Uh, a, a blackberry? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a blackberry girl. You know, there, I, 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 I guess I cut on black. I never owned a blackberry, so I don't know how, how they oh, are. Oh, because you're not your Mac guy. I'm you're not like totally. No, not totally a Mac guy. I'm just not a business, like a corporate yep. guy. I never, had, I never had a boss hand me one and say, here's your phone. I was yeah. always like, Metro PCS, the cheapest thing I could find until I started making money. <laughs> yeah, but. I got a BlackBerry in 2006 at work. And I mean, after I, after I had that, I couldn't go anywhere else. That's all I knew. And then I went on my own and had a BlackBerry. And yeah. then this time around, I looked at the new apps and all the phones. And I was like, ah, oh, I don't even like this. It's like a Pop-Tart. <laughs> don't, don't fear the Android. Don't fear the apps. <laughs> No. Listen, well, listen I'm, to the show. I'm, You'll have fun listening to it. You'll want an Android phone after. No, you know what? I'm just not going to do it. Yes, you will. Nope. In fact, I'm seriously considering getting my Pearl back. <laughs> my old BlackBerry Pearl. I understand what you're saying, but you can only hold out so long. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me read some emails here. Okay. Oh, you know what? I did want to ask you, too. All your employees that call that girl, do they have to be girls? No. So you have yeah. male technicians at Call That Girl. Yeah, um, we have four four male techs, and then I have a social media guy who loves Call That Girl, and then I got two um, uh, Molly who's in the back there. She does. She's my uh, uh, after school helper. Nice. And then I have another gal that's coming on from the network school. Um, I actually have had really good luck with network students coming in. Really? Yeah, yeah, because they're they're all hungry to learn, and and you know there's no jobs. So, what I've been doing is putting them through an intern academy, and once they pass, then they get put on. Nice. And I've been doing that since last, uh, right around the time you interviewed me. Yeah. Where do you get network so, students? Local local colleges? Network schools. Yep. Cool. But I don't know. Two. The one inter the one that's full time with me, he went to a school like eighty miles away hmm. and just drove there every week or whatever. And um he interned for me for two and a half months and then came on part time and was on for about about a month part time and then I he we just moved him to full time. Huh. Cool. And the tech in the cities in Minneapolis, um, he has a lot of network experience, but 
um, is a little more um, more of a veteran of repair. And the the next three are all graduating this spring from network school, but they go through kind of a full training with me. You know, like they have to learn a lot of stuff before they quote pass. Right. No, I think that's yeah. awesome. Mm hmm. It's really good too. And, and my Mac tech, he's he's just rambunctious. <laughs> PC, Mac, he does all this stuff. He's nose design. I'm like, wow. I'm really? really lucky. Yeah. <laughs> really lucky. And and he knows how to fix like a lot of things I, I with the Mac des um with the iPods and iPads and all that stuff. I'm not too into those products, but you mm -hmm. might you might have to be at some point. I mean not to use not to use them, but maybe to service them. Well, you know what? In the back here, he set up a Mac, uh, Macintosh design studio in our office here. And it's pretty cool. I just don't touch it. Uh. <laughs> the other guys do in this in the shop, but not me. So. <laughs> we'll see. We gotta I, I don't I wouldn't say try to convert you, but you gotta dabble. See what's see what it's like. You know, I bought a Mac in two thousand eight. Yeah. And it and after about a month I couldn't stand it and I put it in the closet for a year. <laughs> okay. Maybe you won't dabble. Then I sold it. So <laughs> I was like, Oh, I'm gonna do well, see I started in Mac, Steve. Did you I, I don't yeah. know if that count does it, uh, when when was that? Nineteen ninety six. Yeah. No, I did two in college. Yeah. But then I they they weren't the same as they are now. No, oh, I also did AS400 and Vax. That was my first. Really? I didn't, I didn't even see a PC for about a year after <laughs> I worked in the lab. So <laughs> when awesome. I got to my first PC, I was like, oh, my God, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> I loved P IBM PC Jr. was like my first PC. It was fun. I don't know if I like that one. It's I just, old school. Yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't have a computer till 1997. So. Yeah. I worked in the labs as a lab attendant and supported the Max and the Vax. That sounds like fun. Yeah. And then I, I did some AS400 support, um, Vax admin support with the, the Unix guy. So I actually didn't do all that before PCs. Really? That's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. Do you remember IN percent quote? No. <laughs> do you remember that? No. That's a that line when you had to send an email? No. I, I N percent quote, and then you typed out your message, and you had to make sure it was under so many characters, and then you'd hit percent send, and that was like the old coded. Really? Email. I bet yeah. you a lot of people listening have heard of that. They might be mad at me for not hearing about that. <laughs> well, you know, we all do different things, so. <laughs> yeah. No, I had a period when I was out of computers. It was like five or six years. I just didn't touch them, and then got back into it like hardcore after that. You're like, okay, I got to get back to being you, a nerd. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Yeah, you can leave it and lose a lot. It's true. I feel like yeah. there's this gap I'm, of knowledge I'm missing. All right, let me read this one from John. He okay. says, uh, hey, Steve, congrats on the 300 mark. I was hoping you would title the 300th episode, This is Sparta. <laughs> there's a common issue that I run into that I found a, that I found a solution for. If you were installing Vista, Vista 7, 2008, 2008 R2, and notice the installer is taking a significant amount of time to uh, display your initial options of install, go into the BIOS and check to see if FDD, the floppy disk drive, is enabled. Lately, computers do not include FDD, but motherboards still support them. Also, some motherboard manufacturers default FDD as enabled. If you have FDD enabled but no FDD attached, the Windows installer hangs for about 10 seconds trying to communicate with the FDD. Disabling FDD in the BIOS will stop the hanging and will let you install Windows without slowdown. Hope this helps. Uh, thank you for your dedication to, and to your listeners and guests, that's John Mon Mon Monahan, aka Jack the Bomb. What was he installing? Vista two thousand eight. It says Vista so that? Vista comma seven comma two thousand eight comma two thousand eight R two. I don't Is know. That server? I guess. Yeah, I guess oh. so. My ears, my ears. <laughs> I don't do servers. Me neither. That's why I just kind of skimmed through it. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> as soon as I heard 2008 and R2, I was like, out of my realm. He's... You know, you know, Steve. You know, just because you do one thing in computers doesn't mean you know everything. Oh yeah. You know, far from it. No, I don't. I don't play with servers, and I don't. I don't play in their pools. But we're doing Podnuts. We're, we're doing Podnuts Pro after this show. That's all about servers. Oh, who's that? Who's on that show? We have two guys. We have Lalo Nunez and Matt Rainey. Mmm, a couple nerds. Oh, yeah. I'm proud mm, of it. Nerdery. Good, the nerdery. Good, in a good way and proud of it. They're actually geeks. Geeks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nerds is different. 
All right. Yeah. <laughs> he says, P.S. I have heard you started a pod nuts pro. See, even Jack knows about it. Um, I've worked as a system support engineer for a year now. Um, wow, he's done a lot of stuff. Did he give his resume? Pretty much. John, nice. if, you want, if you want to be on Podnuts Pro, contact Matt Rainey. If you want to know how to contact Matt Rainey, listen to Podnuts Pro. All right, next email is from George. He says, I got my first AdWords customer the other day, which is pretty exciting. Took her two clicks, unfortunately, but but say la vie. I have my setting re re ratcheted down pretty low. It's still a challenge juggle, juggling a day job, side jobs, and family life, so I'm pretty conservative. Um, anyway, it was pretty exciting for me, and I wanted to share that with you. Because George had bought the tech site builder, so he finally got his AdWords up and running, and he got a customer. I remember oh. my first AdWords customer, too. Was... You, you know what? I don't use AdWords. Um, we are going with a zero marketing budget on that stuff. That's why I hired the SEO, SEM guy. No, that's smart. And plus, yeah. plus you're with your affiliate, that's the zero money well, you're paying, isn't it? You know what? I also want to just finish up by telling you that affiliate is, I don't want people to go run out and think that, you know, these affiliates are easy to get and, and not everybody's a perfect partner. And that's just, it's actually, it's like a business development opportunity. You know, okay. it's like you're building a partnership with a company to, you know, partner together and, and work together on a plan. It's not just like it's, it starts today and ends tomorrow. This right, is an ongoing right. project. And, and what a lot of people would call it is an account. You know, it's like we just book, we know, you know, we just bid on an account and won it or a contract. But see, server guys use contracts. I call them more like, like affiliations because that's really what they are. But they're not. You know, there's not, every every affiliation has a different kind of wiggle to it. Maybe you know, you have to right. figure out something else. And um, I just don't want everybody to, that's listening to be like, I'm gonna go get tons of affiliates. <laughs> okay. You know, because it's hard to get. <laughs> okay. And um. You know, I forgot what you were just saying before that with, I want to add on to that. Um, Marketing, oh, the AdWords? Uh, yeah, the AdWords. Well, you know, my SEO guy, which he is actually an SEM guy, he does all my backend Google Analytics, checks keywords, and he can actually track by the minute what people are searching before they get to my site. That's cool. That's awesome. Like, so we know what people are doing on my site. We can actually see what, what they were looking for. And he goes and, and massages that every day. Wow. You know, and, and we're, yeah. So he knows. And what we've really had good luck with is the Google Maps. And um, he's he's in there every day doing something different. You mean and, like you know, Google he, Places? Yeah. Because I got the two locations and we got a pretty big uh, client out of that the first week he did that. So that paid off. That, and then we asked him how you found us. And he said, Google Maps. And really? we know because I've had them up forever and I never got anything. So, but he does a lot of that tweaking out every day. Good. I, I want a guy and, like that. See yeah, that? you should hire him. He's awesome. I probably he's, I probably couldn't available. afford him. I probably couldn't afford him. I think you could. Right. They're not as expensive as you think. They're not, you know, they're, I mean, I, I think you have to give somebody, an SEO person, a list of things you expect done yeah. and give them a little wiggle room to learn yeah. because everybody's business is different. But once they're in, they don't need as much time because hmm. they've already figured out right. what you actually need done and stuff, you know, so... I don't know. For me, it was about a month and a half of him really learning, call that girl, everything we've done, all of our marketing. And, you know, I mean, we do so many things with social media constantly that every day it can change. You know, I put out a new blog and that can really change how things go today. Oh, big time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he takes those blogs and go post them on like 50 article pages. Really? Yeah. yeah I need a we've got like them all that. set up. Yeah, you do. My marketing hat is not being worn. Well, I'll send them your number. All right. Yeah. Um, I also put an email to myself in here. I want to read the, the people's names of everybody who donated for the 300th episode because I so appreciate what you guys did, but I didn't. I don't have it put together yet, so I'm going to read it next show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read it next show. That's awesome. What? <laughs> um, this is but from 302, right? Yeah, it's 302. Oh. But that's all right. Hey, I I just we're getting slammed with with emails here. I guys are keeping me busy. Good. Um, this is from Dale. He says, Steve, I just listened to episode 300. I wish I could have caught the announcement to send emails or voicemails. Don't worry about it, Dale. Honestly, I believe your shows have changed my path in life. It's probably, every once in a while, I'll read an, e an email that just bolsters up the Podnuts network and just makes That's us feel nice. really damn good. I don't like to read them, just, but to toot our horns, but 
It's this one is just good, so I'm going to read it. He says, before I found your show, I would get up, drive a truck for 12 hours, go home, eat, go to bed, and do it again the next day. 20 years I have done that, wondering what I was doing with my life. Now I love fixing laptops in my spare time. It's become a great hobby that I can even make a little money at. I will definitely purchase your videos, but I keep using all my extra money to buy laptop parts and hard drives. In one word, Steve, your shows have given me my passion. I could not, never thank you enough for what you have done for me. Thank you, and I will be listening as long as you are podcasting. I had to read that because that's killer. And he, I know he says he, he says my name in it, but all of you guys contributed to what he's talking about there. So I want to just thank everybody for that. And thank you, Dale. That's a nice message. You know what? There's nothing better than seeing somebody that is trying to do what they are passionate about and get out of their jobs that they have to do, like because they have families to support or that's just what they've done. And one of my texts right now is in the process of that. You know, he, he's been like, I found my passion and I'm going to work in computers. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to do everything I can then to make your dream come true because I need a guy like you. He fits the mold. And you know what? There's no job. So I'm like, I created him a job. Exactly. No, it feels and, good. It's a good and fit. He you loves got a it. good person out of it. People want to, mm -hmm. people want to do what they're passionate about a lot. And we get emails like this all the time. And a lot of guys just don't know where, where to start or how to yeah. do it. And um, we go over it in the show a lot about how to start from scratch. So yeah, I, it's getting through, and I'm glad people are, are taking up the information. Well, we could do an interview sometime about how to start a computer repair business because there is okay. – I've yet to see anything – really good out there on that if i would have seen that book when i started i would have bought it in a heartbeat yeah but yeah there's yeah. I, there's no books but i i put out a series of videos that are, that are it's basically a blueprint of what i did to start my own shop and yeah. I, I put how to do the website i mean it's step by step how to do everything and how to get your adwords up and running yeah. too so that's, to that's the ad words, I guess a lot of people do that and to me it's, I'm like I, I just don't get yeah. it like so you basically you pay and you get higher up the list in Google right you get traffic I mean it's like you get instant traffic it's a light switch yeah on and off but I want traffic but, today turn it on don't I want to turn it off and yeah get, but what about MSN Yahoo they don't have, those matter they have their own they have at oh, Microsoft yeah. has ad center Yahoo has and was Yahoo search marketing for a while I don't know what I think now they merge with Microsoft. Pay per click is I, you know, I haven't done it. I guess like I sold really? my shop a year, two years ago. But when I had, that's how I started with AdWords. I mean, it costs five bucks to sign up. You get up there, instant traffic. I don't think you could beat it. See, except, my SEO except, guy's doing it. Yeah, like, well, then let, you let yeah. let your SEO guy do it. That's fine. Yes. But it's okay. I gave him a budget. And it's I was okay like, to do Let's both. See. It's okay to do but both. But what he did, in, instead of us paying, he went and found a bunch of words that people are coming to my site for anyway, and those are the free words. Yeah, that's cool. But, but if, if you can't get up on the list on the free words, then you might have to use AdWords. If he, yeah. he sounds like he's good, so he's, he's probably getting you up there ranked high. I think high. so. But, but that, here's my question. If you're in a competitive market like, like Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, it can cost really a lot of money to be at the top. This is true. Yeah, and I'm like... From what I've heard, it's a lot of money. But it still so might like, be worth yeah. it. It still might be worth it. You pay a lot yeah. of money for Log Me and Rescue. You know, yeah. Some people pay a lot of money for their marketing. It's whatever's going whatever's gonna to make them the most money, I think. I think what used to mess me up was there's AdWords and AdSense. And I didn't really pay attention to the difference. Yeah. I don't want to sound like stupid, but to me, I just never paid attention because I didn't want to do it. <laughs> I just never wanted to be on top of Google. Okay. I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> I just was like, I didn't care. I never actually Google wasn't even part of my marketing. Well, that's good. Everybody, no. I, I, no, it is. Everybody has their their way of doing it. If it wasn't for Google, I would not have started my business. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. It was. I was AdWords no. all the way. It's all I used. No, I didn't do any of that. I did it the old school way. Go yeah. out and network. Yeah. Meet people. That sounds that sounds difficult. <laughs> Yeah. Remember we talked about that last time and you were yeah. like, like, what do you do? I said, I go to events and give out my cards, you know? That was great advice. A couple other guys have talked about that since then. Those like networking breakfasts and stuff like that and giving out yeah. cards and meeting people. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's, that's a whole nother show on its own. All right. Yeah. D definitely. Yeah, another sign day. <laughs> All right. Let me, uh, let me see here. This is tell you what guys, cause we're, we're going to, do pod let's pro in a couple minutes if you sent me an email i promise i will read it next week but 
because I, I do have a bunch of them here, so thank you guys for sending them in. All the emails always get read. All the voicemails always get played, so we will do that next week. Um, let's wrap up this show now. Lisa, I want to thank you very much for coming on. It's fun. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank, uh, thank you for inviting me on again. Uh, hey, and I, I know at this time, I'm sorry that my computer crashed in the okay. middle of the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was really prepared this time. <laughs> I was like, last time you had no face and you had the bad echo. And uh, <laughs> I was horrible. I'm really sorry for that. No, that's cool. Your headset sounds great, by the way. I love it. What is it, Logitech? I hope it's not Logitech. It is Logitech. Because I, I, I always rip on Logitech for having <laughs> tinny sounding headsets, but that one sounds almost as good as the Plantronics. I don't even know where I got it, but I know it's brand new. Good. That sounds good. Yeah. No, you know what? It sounds a lot better than my BlackBerry torches. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> I get I get electric shock from it sometimes. Really? Yeah, my ears. Because you know, I, here, check this out. This is my headset from the BlackBerry Torch, and I live and breathe on my BlackBerry, and I'm not kidding. Okay. And this is what a mess it always is: tangled up, and it has two. Headsets. So every time I talk, I gotta do. I always gotta put them both in. And my old one had just one ear set. Right, right. And this actually, because of the connection, I get zapped in the ears. I would not use that. Personally. No. <laughs> That's why I'm like, I think I'm gonna go with that Bluetooth, but I hate that too. Yeah. Mm. You'll find something you anyway, like. I know I will. If you guys want to check out Lisa's book, and I highly recommend that you do, especially if you wanna, especially if you wanna get hot and heavy into remote support. This is the way to do it. She's done it. It's proven. She's a pro at it. So um, might as well listen to somebody like that. It is. Uh, you can check it out at podnuts.com slash call that girl. Check it out there. It is available. Sweet. Lisa, thanks again very much for joining us today. And I hope, Thank you. Ho hopefully you'll sign up in the future. Yeah, we'll see each other again here soon. Sounds good. And everybody who's okay. watching and listening and streaming, thank you very much. We're going thank to you. do uh, Podnuts Pro in a couple minutes, so don't go anywhere. Haha. Uh -huh. See ya.